Good day, Tim. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. Now, you and I go way back into the mid 80s with our association with NSPI that is now ISPI, the International Society for Performance Improvement. Um, but for our audience, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background in both learning and development and other performance improvement approaches? Absolutely, Guy, and good to see you too. So, uh, you know, our history goes way back because of uh, NSPI and ISPI. I started my career back in the early 80s at uh, Intel Corporation, um, which created lots of opportunities to learn and explore performance improvement and, you know, started in learning and development and then evolved into performance improvement. One of the first things that got my attention in working in both manufacturing and design at Intel was the importance of personal commitment. So we observed that when teams lost their commitment, their, their team commitment to what it was that we were trying to get done here, uh, and that could, that could be caused by a variety of factors, um, performance tended to go down. It was pretty easy to observe that. So very early on, I got interested in how do we cultivate and maintain commitment of each individual member of the team. And I was, I was studying that in the context of, you know, our classic ISPI performance improvement model, you know, not jumping to conclusions. Um, but it kind of, that focus on commitment kind of led me into to getting really interested in the science of management. And uh, at some point I made a conscious decision that um, it made more sense to me instead of trying to convince managers to let me come in and help them analyze and improve performance, that uh, I'd be better off if I could help them see why they needed to own performance improvement as the manager of the organization, help them see that um, every individual on the team needed to be able to manage their own performance. And their role was to lead that, make sure that happened, tie it together as a team. Uh, and so this is kind of how uh, my career started to bloom around this uh, performance management approach. It was a little different than what was being talked about in the literature as performance management with you know, a manager sitting down with an employee. This was a system that the manager led, but the team owned. And uh, I got a lot of mileage out of that. So I, I you know, lucked into opportunities at Intel where teams were struggling. And we took a few of these simple ideas. Uh, a number of them I borrowed from Bill Daniels, another uh, member of ISPI. And um, we, I got the opportunity to um, get some really nice success stories that turned into a book opportunity. Um, and uh, by the time I left Intel after 15 years, I, I really had some good experience as kind of an internal consultant working with different groups around the organization. That was what I always wanted to do. I wanted to be an external consultant. I'm not sure why. Uh, I think I thought it might cause people to listen to me. Didn't change much, but um, that got me going on a 20 year uh, consulting career as an external. Um, I, I, I labeled myself as more of a management consultant. Um, I was interested in leadership, but I didn't, I didn't really view myself as an expert or consulting in leadership. Um, but about eight years ago, I I got interested in a leadership program for myself, a leadership and coaching program at the Institute of Generative Leadership, Bob Dunham. And uh, I learned some really interesting things about myself. And you know, at this stage, Guy, uh, if you're interested in growing as a leader, you, gotta, you start by focusing on yourself. And uh, a key thing that I learned is that I was uh, what, what Bob calls a head on a stick. I was cut off from my body. I, I viewed it as the enemy. And I, I realized that that's why I wasn't having as much fun and I was kind of holding myself back as a consultant to executives. 
because I had, I had fear in my body and I didn't know what to do with it. So um, that got my attention. And uh, I studied with Bob and his organization. I took a three-year course, took me five and a half years to do it. Slow learner. And uh, I, ju I just wanted to get everything out of it that I could. And I'm, I'm gonna go on a little bit longer with the intro because this is an important part of setting up the rest, I think. So um, about the same time I started that leadership program, completely uh, serendipitously, I started uh, taking some Tai Chi classes. And what I realized pretty quickly, I saw them as separate things, but what I realized was that Tai Chi was a way for me to learn to get out of my head and into my body like I was being taught was so important for leading others and leading yourself in life. So um, those two things kind of came together for me. And uh, after several years of studying both of those things, uh, I made a decision uh, that I wanted to bring this embodied learning. Uh, so, so take everything that I already know about working with teams and performance and add to it this embodied element that I have been completely blind to. And so that's how the uh, East Valley Leader Lab got started about a year and a half ago. And just it, you know, uh, just by way of introduction, I was very involved, uh, some of your viewers will know this, some won't, very involved with ISPI for many, many years. Uh, it was my professional home. Uh, I, I got tremendous value out of it. I think I participated a lot. I was on the board uh, for a couple of years. Um, but I, I just, you know, I, I needed to grow into something else. So while I've continued to keep an eye on ISPI and the field, um, you know, my professional home has been more in this embodied area recently. And that's why I haven't been around. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction and that background. That's uh, it's good, good now to shift into our main event because I was interested in what I had read about uh, the leader lab. And I was wondering, you know, what you were doing with it and the little that I read on it uh, seemed interesting. And so I wanted to do this video here to give you a chance to explain what this is and, and, you know, let people learn where they can go to learn a little bit more about this. So first of all, tell us about leader lab. What is it and who is it for? Sure. So um, a couple of things became apparent to me as I did this deep dive into embodied learning and embodied leadership. Um, one was um, it, 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 takes, it takes time. You know, you have to be patient. It's a practice that you build over time, kind of like a martial art. And so martial arts can be very useful uh, in concert with this type of development. So, um, you know, it can be very expensive. There are, there are not as many people uh, around the country, around the world that are offering uh, embodied leadership, embodied learning, and it takes time. So it can be very expensive. Uh, the other thing that I noticed was um, a lot of the other people in the class were like me in that they were sort of toward the end of their career, uh, well into their career, right? 20, 30 years into their career. And um, it occurred to me that uh, what I had learned would be, you know, I, I really wish I would have learned it 15, 20 years earlier, that this would be really useful for um, aspiring and um, newer managers and aspiring leaders. So, so one of the key intentions of, of the Leader Lab is to take this, you know, this amazing body of knowledge and boil it down to, to make an offer to help people learn about it and get started on this journey uh, in, an, in an affordable way. And, and we are targeting, um, you know, people that are earlier in their leader career, although we, we seem to be attracting a pretty good mix across the board. Which, which is nice to have that mix in our classes. Can you give me a, a, a short or a quick definition of embodied leadership? And, and what does that mean exactly? Yeah, you want it to be short, huh? 
<laughs> well, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, what, one way to think about it is um, we have all embodied something in our life. So what we have embodied is our personality, right? Our personality, the way we show up to other people. That is, that is deep in our body. Um, and it contains a lot of the, the patterns of how we observe and perceive what's going on in the world, how we make sense of it, and how we respond to it. We all have these patterns. So um, as, uh, as, as leaders mature and take on bigger responsibilities, they may get to a point where what they've embodied, which started back in their adolescent years, isn't all serving them as, as the leader that they want to grow into. So embodied learning is about examining these patterns of how I see the world and how I respond and act in the world, um, identifying some that are not serving where I want to go in, in my future career or in life, uh, and, and then doing something about that. And because your personality is embodied, um, we're not going to be able to shift these patterns through, you know, simply behavioral training. Um, it takes it takes something deeper than that. So the emb the embodied learning process is about disrupting these old embodied patterns, you know, very targeted, um, and taking new actions, and then taking those new actions that work and turning them into ongoing practices, which is growth. So this is, this, this is very different approach to leadership development, I guess, uh, since you're targeting this at leaders. Um, what, uh, can, you, can you define for us how they maybe, it's a blend of that or is this very, very different? Um, you know, the, the key difference is um, you can learn leadership concepts you can learn about what effective managers do, right? We can see case studies. Um, that gives us knowledge. Um, that does not change who we are. So we, we need, we need em, the embodied approach to change, to change how we show up and who we are. I would say it's a blend. Um, the, the concepts that inform embodied leadership tend to come out of a, a a tradition called the ontological tradition. So it's a focus more on how am I being versus what do I know and what am I doing? But of course, to be effective leaders, you need to know some things. So, you know, we keep the knowledge aspect as uh, simple as we can, um, really important distinctions about what really makes you a leader and what are the things that um, cause people to follow people. Um, and then we do a lot of a lot of practice getting the body involved, and that that's different from most of the you know manager and leader training that I came up with in my career. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. So a lot of practice uh, with feedback to shape the behaviors of people and how they present themselves. Is that correct? Yeah, always deeper than just shape shape shaping behavior. So one way. You know, I, uh, one simple way of thinking about it is, um, you know, we all, we don't just experience the external world, right? We interpret what's going on. And that comes from how we learn to make sense of the world in our, in our growing up. So um, th these types of disembodied change occurs as we learn to make sense of the world differently, see the world differently, and then it becomes easier to act to respond differently to the same stimuli. So it's a, there, you know, an end result is some new behaviors, um, but it's, you know, these behaviors are, are going deep into our body. So you say you, you're targeting this at uh, new managers, but you're getting a fair amount of experienced managers uh, as part of in participating in all of this. So are there any, any differences between that you're seeing between 
old managers who may have ingrained habits and versus new managers who may not have uh, such well entrenched uh, approaches? I think that's an answer, you know, we hope to get to over time. Um, what, we, what we saw right off the bat was that um, our desire to keep the classes with, you know, less mature, therefore probably younger folks um, was, uh, was probably not as good of an idea as having a mix because what we see is the interaction between people with tons and tons of experience, and they're discovering some things that they would like to change. And then we see people earlier in their career, um, it's easier for them to think about these changes and to jump into these changes, but they don't have all the experience. So combining those two things makes a lot of sense. Um, over time, I'm, I'm paying attention to, um, uh, is it in general, um, easier to disrupt and develop new embodied uh, practices, ways of being when you start, you know, in your 30s or 40s mm -hmm. than it is in your 50s and 60s. Are you writing articles about what you're doing now? Is there, are, is there anything that's, uh, you know, relatively new from, from you in particular about this? I'm... Mostly what I've done since we started this initiative, uh, you know, if you look at some of the last few things I posted uh, as part of Ensemble on LinkedIn, having seen this interview, you will now understand there was a drift going on. I was moving in this direction with my partner at the time, Donna Dobrovich. She was kind of ahead of me in this um, frame. She'd been working with leaders most of her career. Um, since I started the Leader Lab, made this shift, um, I've done some writing, but I'm using it internal to the, to the classes. Okay. Um, so we need to, I, I want to do some more of that. Um, but I, I don't have a lot out there now about the embodied approach. Mm -hmm. Well, let me read a review that I found on, I think it was through LinkedIn, um, but, but I'm not sure of the source here. I just got this this morning earlier. I did this program last spring and found it immensely useful. Happy to talk about it if anyone is interested. The combined attention to leadership as a mental and a physical practice was excellent. What kinds of other reactions are you getting from some of the people who have been through this? What, what, are, their, what are some of their testimonials, if you will? So one of the things we hear from uh, almost everybody who attends our courses for the first time is uh, they, they just they leave the sessions in a noticeably more relaxed state. Um, so we're, do, we're actually using uh, Tai Chi as a vehicle in the course to help people get out of their head and into their body. Uh, and then we do you know, more practical somatic exercises that tie directly into uh, how you show up as a leader. So certainly the number one thing is, um, you know, and if, you know, if that's all people would get um, in this day and age, I'm happy to have people uh, let go of some of the stress for the time that they're, they're with us. Um, the other thing, you know, we're, we're in early days. So we have designed a three course curriculum, which is laid out on our website. I'm sure we'll cover that later. Um, but the, uh, at, at this stage, what we're hoping to do is give people enough of a sample of, of what do we mean by the embodied learning process by actually having them focus on their body. Um, uh, we're, we're deliberately having them work on self-awareness, um, increase their self-awareness, and we're starting them in a question that is fundamental to um, learning about yourself, which is what do you really care about? And we have them go kind of deep into that question. So um, I guess the, the other feedback that we get is um, we, to, to help people have a sample of this journey, we try to set everybody up to have um, some new action, small new action that they're going to take 
that they could try out in the real world. Um, that's different from the way they would respond to a situation in the past. And uh, people talk about, you know, well, this is interesting. I've taken a lot of courses and I haven't always gone out and done something completely different. And here we have. And um, even if they don't say that, um, we, we do a one-on-one -on -one session with everybody in the first five week course. And uh, we find out, you know, what they're going to do and they generally come back and share whether they've done it or not. So um, in that sense, we've got some sort of third level evaluation data of behavior, behaviors changing. So let's talk about this. Uh, you said this was uh, three courses. You just said that the uh, first course is five weeks long. What's the time commitment to individuals doing this? Tell us about, you know, how does this all play out? Sure, sure. So we've, 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 we're keeping things pretty simple. Um, the three courses are structured similarly in that they are five weeks long. We meet for 90 minutes a week on the same day consecutively, five weeks. Um, this gives people time to take uh, each lesson and each set of practices and explore between the sessions. And then they, get, they come back and they're going to do some reporting back, at least in small groups. Um, every session, every 90 minute session uh, has a certain amount of guided movement in it. This is getting people out of their heads and into their bodies. And it's also, you know, we, we choose movements that we will then use in somatic practices where they are just at the very early stages of building new capacities in their body, right? Feeling different when they show up to a certain conversation that they might need to have with somebody. So it's, a, it's um, we get people out of their heads into their bodies. We get them experimenting with um, emotions and with language and with motion. And, um, and, it's, and it's, you know, there's a method to the madness. Um, we're getting them started on a journey. Uh, the second class um, delves into a deeper self-examination because again, in order to grow as a leader or as a human being, you have to, you have to self-examine a little bit. Um, it's about the stories we live by. And, uh, and then the third class is where we really start to take it back into the organization. So it, it, in each five-week class, we do some things that are very relevant to conversations they might need to have in their organization right now. But we're really trying to get them to go deep in themselves. And then the third class, um, there's more emphasis on um, taking it back into their team, into their organization. So my uh, follow-on questions to that, thank you for that. My follow-on questions is, how, so how many people are in each class or course? And are you doing this face-to-face -face and or virtually? What, what can you share with us about that? Sure. So uh, I, my uh, partner in this, Amanda and I, um, we're both of the mind at the outset that we, we're going to create a uh, a local resource for leaders. That's what we called it, East Valley Leader Lab. And the driving force behind that was, you know, embodiment requires some contact, right? You, you need to do exercises with other people. And, um, and you're moving, you know, there's a lot of movement and um, it's difficult to do that virtually. But you know what? When the pandemic showed up and the only way we could do it was virtually, we figured out how to do it virtually. So um, our emphasis is to be a local resource uh, and we um, offer on a regular basis um, virtual courses. We've got one starting at the end of September, the first five week course, the introductory course uh, that, that anybody could join from around the world as long as they can. Uh, we tend to schedule these things toward the end of the day. So it's the end of the work day, like four o'clock um, for the local folks. And it's gonna be a little different if they're somewhere else, but we've had a lot of, you know, we've had people adapting to their time. Uh, and uh, we keep it manageable. So um, our upper limit on these classes right now is 15. And we've done some with eight and with 12. Uh, we're doing a live one right now with 
uh, between 12 and 15 people every week. Well, I will be sure to uh, get from you and include in the YouTube show notes and in my uh, blog that will introduce this video, the appropriate URLs for your website so that people can check this out and see the, uh, the schedule availability of this, uh, the one coming up soon and, and, and thereafter. Uh, as part of, a part of our wrap up, what else would you want to add about Leader Lab and uh, that we haven't covered in our questions so far? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, as a, as a consultant in my own business at Ensemble, uh, you know, I was reaching out to leaders in organizations. Off, I had an offer to help them improve the performance of, you know, large scale teams. And toward the end, we were focusing more and more on leadership teams. Um, as I've gotten deeper into leadership and understood, you know, through my own growth and experience, how important it is to, you know, do some, do some development on yourself before you go uh, apply this to other people. Um, I, I would just say it's, uh, you know, you can think about this as something you might want to bring into a team or a leadership team of an organization you work with. We, we do work with intact teams. And uh, you can think of it as something for your own personal growth. If you find this notion that I've been talking about of embodied learning, embodied leadership, interesting, the best way to find out about it is come check it out and see what it's about. And then um, you, might, you might decide you want to you know, share this with a, with a team that would like to do it together. But start with yourself. You know, even if we bring in a team, um, we're going to focus on them as individuals in the, in the outset, right? And then, and then they'll start slowly to apply it to the people that work with them. Well, Tim, thank you uh, so much for sharing this with us today. And it was nice to catch up with you. It's been a decade, I think, since I've seen you. But again, I'll put the appropriate links to your website uh, in our YouTube show notes so that people can uh, uh, find you and learn a little bit more about this and then make a connection as appropriate. But uh, Best wishes for you and for Leader Lab. Thanks so much, Guy. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I like talking about this stuff. So if anybody just wants, needs more information after they look at the website uh, and want to chat, um, I'm always happy to chat with my ISPI friends. Cool. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Guy.